People think about the wedding, they often have images of this, this, or even this. The West wedding ceremony becomes a universal symbol of marriage. This also applies to most Chinese couples since they tend to believe this is a ceremonial fashion that everyone follows. However, these new couples often blend their traditions into West wedding ceremony. As time progresses to today, some Chinese people begin to follow the traditional wedding rituals and ceremony. And that raises the question, how did ancient Chinese people treat marriage? To begin with, we need to acknowledge the fact that Chinese practice of wedding has always been changing. Also, this video will not mention Chinese polygamy culture. There are three phases of a Chinese marriage, pre-wedding, wedding ceremony, and post-ceremony. Pre-wedding can be divided into six steps which were created by people in Zhou Dynasty. These six steps are called Liu Li, or six etiquettes. The first one is Na Cai, or proposal. In ancient China, marriage was arranged by parents of young people. These youngsters would not know each other until they are married. Parents would often hire a matchmaker to seek suitable matches of their son or daughter. When both parents were satisfied with their future son or daughter-in-law, the matchmaker would notice both families and move to the next step, which is wenming or information exchange. The matchmaker would exchange both young couple's names and ba zi to each family. Na ji or engagement is the third etiquette which determines whether young couples are suited. Both families will hire a fortune teller to divine the future of the young couples based on their ba zi. The marriage will be suspended if the young couple's ba zi did not match. The next etiquette will be followed if they matched. Na zhen, or betrothal gifts, it's the following step which the bridegroom's family would send betrothal gifts to the another family. The fifth etiquette is called qing qi, or event planning, which both families would decide the date of the wedding ceremony. This also played an important role because many dates were considered as inauspicious by many people. Ying qing or welcoming the bride is the last etiquette and the beginning of the wedding ceremony. The bridegroom would go to the bride's address and bring her to his home where the ceremony was held. Now, what's next for the ceremony? Since both the bridegroom and the bride were arrived, they needed to wash their hands first. They had to face each other where the bridegroom sat in the west and the bride sat in the east. Then they would eat meat from the same animal together and exchange wooden ladles which contained wine. The newlywed had to cut off a strand of hair and join together. Guests of the ceremony would have a feast afterwards until evening. The young couples, along with some servants, would enter the bridal chamber and be naked on the bed. Still, they needed to face each other. Servants would then leave the chamber, and the newlyweds would probably do something that I won't put on the screen. The next day morning, the new wife would have to take a bath and bring some jujubes, chestnuts, and meats, which were mixed with gingers and cinnamons, to her father and mother-in-law's chamber. The wife would also have to cook for her husband's parents. The parents would leave some food behind to let the new wife to finish. I know it may sound gross. After three months, the family of the husband will carry the new wife to visit their ancestral shrine. And that is the brief summary of the marriage rituals in Zhou. People in later dynasties mainly adopted this system and made several changes. The first was the Han Dynasty. People in Han Dynasty only followed parts of six etiquettes, and they eventually developed three other cultures, San Shu or Three Letters, Zhou Yue or Music Performance, and Nao Dong Fang, which is Betting Ceremony. 
San Shu includes Ping Shu or letter of engagement, Li Shu or letter of betrothal gifts, and Ying Qing Shu or letter of wedding ceremony. These are written documents to ensure the marriage between the newlyweds. Zhou Yue during the wedding was favored by Han Xuandi or Emperor Xuan of Han. This emperor believed that people should be happy during their marriage. Hence, wedding hosts started to hire musicians to perform music during weddings. Nao Dongfang started to become a culture in the purpose of making the newlyweds less awkward. Since the young couples had never seen each other before, their friends would tease and trick the two. All the friends would leave the couples alone if the couples started to do something that is out of content. Then we move to the Tang Dynasty where most people practiced three letters and six etiquettes. Furthermore, they had developed more rituals such as Chue Shan Li, Sa Zhang, and Bai Li. The most noticeable difference in wedding between the Tang Dynasty and the previous dynasties was the clothing. The costumes that newlyweds wore in the Zhou and Han Dynasty were Jue Bian Xuan Duan and Chun Yi Xun Ran. Both were in black with red details. Although Sun in the Han Dynasty tended to use red as the major color of wedding attire, this culture did not become popular until the Tang Dynasty. The newlyweds in this dynasty were Liang Guan Li Fu and Dian Chai Li Yi. Now the time is 14th century, and people in the Ming Dynasty have simplified certain etiquettes. Six etiquettes were narrowed into four. Wen Ming will be part of Na Cai. Na Ji, Na Zheng, and Qing Qi will become Na Bi, or betrothal money, and a new etiquette called Yi Hun, or marriage discussion, was added. The wedding attires had completely changed. Ming Taizu, or great ancestor of Ming, the founding emperor of the Ming dynasty, ordered that bridegrooms were allowed to wear Jiu Ping Guan Fu, and brides should wear Feng Guan Xia Pei. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. There are many details that I omit that you can find in the links in the description below.